Right, let's take a break from the Twitter fall. Um, I'm going to try to go quickly as Pia did, because I'm sure you want to get to the panel as quickly as possible. Uh, my role is to quickly give you a brief history of open government in New Zealand. Um, the triangle there is the US version of open government, which is transparency, participation, and collaboration. The one thing I'll say up front is two caveats. This is my version of history, because it turns out it didn't exist. Um, and so it's obviously both selective as well as got my biases in it. Um, just starting with the fact that open government isn't a, no isn't a new notion. Uh, probably you can trace it back all the way to the Charter of Liberties in Magna Carta. In New Zealand in 1981, there was the Danks Committee report, which led to the Official Information Act in 1982. And it's quite important that we uh, separate open government as an outcome from the internet that enables and certainly has sped it up. But the basic notion of open government has been around for a very long time. Now, I'm going to use the convention of uh, anyone who works in public services does, which is when you use a capital G for government, it means politicians. And when you use small g, it means the public services. And I very deliberately have put in open government both the political angle and the public service angle, which tends to be a bridge that doesn't meet often, um, and being quite deliberate to put those two together. So uh, looking at the 2011 manifestos of all the three political parties, which are represented here, National made no mention whatsoever of open government. The Labor port, uh, manifesto mentioned both transparency as well as participation. And the Greens uh, mentioned only transparency. And so the very notion of open government, I think, is certainly up for debate. I did a quick um, number gathering from David's blog and put together by each political party the total number of MPs. And for each MP, how many of them are on the web, Twitter, and Facebook? I think a couple of interesting things. All the political parties that are represented by one MP in parliament, all of them are quite active. Uh, they've got web, Twitter, and Facebook presence. National, uh, for some reason, their MPs are far more active on the web. And in terms of Greens and Labor, they're both on Twitter and Facebook. And the interesting thing, I think, is that Facebook is far more popular as the medium for engagement than uh, compared, compared to both web and Twitter. So 86%, you know, take these numbers, as they're not authoritative, but roughly that's a pretty high number. So 86% of our MPs are on Facebook. A uh, couple of other quick mentions about what else is happening in the political dimension. Uh, they Work For You was started by Rob McKinnon in 2006. It isn't that uh, active at the moment, and that's what happens when you have a purely volunteer run website. But it, it's probably its biggest benefit was to get the parliament website to be far more usable. Uh, a number of political blogs in New Zealand, uh, the two, probably the most two popular ones, is David's blog, Kiwi blog, as well as No Right Turn. There is community platforms for political action, issues.co.nz. Uh, one of the recent one was the Save TVNZ7 campaign. And this is emerging, I think, as a community platform which combines together many channels to start political action. Um, I predict, I think most of you have heard of it, it's uh, probably the purest form of wisdom of the crowds. And it's uh, because money is involved. And you tend to get pretty good predictions that come out of it. So it's a political prediction website. Now, looking to the uh, public service part of it with the small g, which is the public service staff, um, if many of you would probably be aware of how the public service is actually um, differentiated between the core government departments and outwards. And just to mention that um, I'm not covering local government in this because we, it gets really too big otherwise. So it's just the central government at the moment. Uh, New Zealand was an early leader in e-participation. The May 2000 e original e-government vision spoke about it will be easier for people to have their say in government. 
September 2007, um, I think New Zealand was perhaps the first country that used a wiki to allow new people to comment on new legislation, which was the Police Act. And then there was the guide to online participation. There was a community built around it. And quite clearly, um, this was the one area of open government that New Zealand was an early leader in. Open data has been a bright spot all across uh, those years. The picture is a perspective on open data, which is where I would say much of the open data conversation between government and outside government actually started. It was a joint uh, platform that was run by Webstock and Govis. And uh, that was held in February 2009. And a few months after that, there's been several initiatives that started off, most uh, prominently Open New Zealand, which led to the formation of the Open Government Ninjas and eventually uh, the Open Data Catalog. Many of, all of these were from individuals who were simply interested and did prompt uh, many in government to respond and set up their own more authoritative websites. So the New Zealand Goal Framework was set up and data.gov.nz was set up um, pretty much along the lines of the Open Data Catalog. And Open Data has remained a focus in New Zealand. Uh, it's one of the five directions and priorities for government IS ICT that was adopted in October 2010. And open data is also at the heart of the Declaration on Open and Transparent Government. Um, and one of the things that I, I would ask the panel to have a look at is whether our open government from a public service is more dominated by open data currently than any other pillar of open government. Um, there is a transparency initiative which is led by the State Services Commission in which expenses of chief executives of government departments are put as a form of a data set on data.gov.nz and so anyone can have a look at that. There is a law commission review which uh, is just about so any time now uh, likely to come out which will recommend changes to the Official Information Act and certainly in many quarters this is uh, looked for as perhaps going to be major changes being recommended. And outside the government itself in the public service domain, uh, there are several efforts. Uh, for those of you who are aware, there's fyi.org.nz where anybody can make an official Information Act request. Um, it's sent to the right department and the response that is received is publicly displayed. Um, there's also an international effort called Open Data Stories, which is started by a Kiwi, where success stories using open data from government is recorded. And there are the other side of uh, pressure being put on from the outside onto the public service. There are several uh, instruments being used. So the ACC forum is, is quite an active forum where people who have a grievance against ACC are um, quite active on that. Go Petitions is uh, often used to initiate petitions, and uh, there's quite a few of them on at the moment. Facebook, uh, absolutely a major platform for citizen-initiated pressure on public services. And uh, the downside is you get things like internet video threats being made against specific public service staff. And so here's my final thought. Um, I've adapted what is known as the uh, Gartner Magic Quadrant. And it's quite interesting because Gartner defines essentially two axes. One is the completeness of vision, and the second is ability to execute. And depending upon where a country is located or a particular vendor is located, this is something that's probably worth thinking about. Where is New Zealand? Where are we heading? Uh, what's our completeness of vision? And what's our ability to execute on that vision? Thank you.